Hey guys, how's it going? Andrew here, Enough Said Cars on Monday afternoon. Hope you're all doing well. Um, I got back from Chicago late last night. I got back to my house around 10.15. Uh, thankfully, didn't have to work today because I was absolutely exhausted. Um, but um, wanted to make my recap video and, and share my thoughts on the show and show you what I picked up. And um, overall, I would say that I had a fantastic time. The show was everything that I had anticipated it was going to be, everything I had expected and hoped it was going to be. And the cards um, that I saw were fantastic. And it was awesome catching up with friends, uh, people that I had met in the past, and also was able to meet a bunch of new people, um, YouTubers who uh, I follow and had hoped to catch up with. Um, Flew out on Wednesday morning early with my friend Tony. Uh, we Our flight left around 7. Um, with the time change, we arrived in Chicago just after 8. Um, went to our hotel. We stayed at the Hilton, which is connected to the convention center. Um, and at around 10, we went and checked in and got our passes to the show, uh, which opened at 3.30. So we had a little, little bit of downtime and got settled into the hotel. Uh, we were um, at the door uh, at 3.30 and just kind of hit the ground running. I got my bearings a little bit. And um, as typical for me, I didn't buy anything at all the first day. I kind of had a few dealers that I wanted to check out um, specifically and, and went and looked at their stuff. And um, I went to the PSA line actually immediately upon entering. I had two cards uh, that I had um, shown earlier uh, that had been graded by PSA, but they had agreed to re-slab them because the cards were loose in the holders. So I um, immediately went to the PSA line, like straight there. There were already about 15 people in front of me, got in line, and um, within a minute, there were probably 50 more people behind me in line. So I, I don't even know what PSA was charging. I think it was between two and $300 per card, uh, but there were plenty of people grading stuff. Um, so I dropped off my stuff there and um, started walking around the show. There was, in most of the hall there, no air conditioning, or it didn't feel like there was any air conditioning at all on Wednesday. It was really hot. Uh, towards the back was a little bit better, um, but, you know, uncomfortably hot inside for me anyway. Um, so walked around, saw some awesome stuff. Uh, the show ended at 8, um, got dinner at the hotel, and went to sleep. Uh, Thursday morning, got up. The show started at 9.30. Um, walked around again. Really didn't pick anything up, I don't think, Thursday morning. Um, I did go get my Diaz cigarettes cards uh, back from PSA in the early afternoon, and um, they look great and no longer shake around in the holders, which is nice. So I was happy to get those back. Uh, PSA did not charge me for that. Um, Thursday night, went to dinner at Gibson's, which is a steakhouse really close to the convention center. It's a really nice restaurant and had dinner there. And um, as we were walking out, saw Johnny Bench, Steve Garvey, and Fergie Jenkins eating dinner together um, in kind of the main room. We were in like a side room. And uh, Johnny Bench happened to just walk out the front door at the same exact time as us. So we got some pictures with him. Um, I think he is kind of known at times to be not that friendly. That's what I've heard anyway. Um, but he was uh, more than accommodating uh, with us and took pictures. And um, so that was pretty cool. Uh, then went to the YouTube get together at, um, don't even remember what hotel that was at. But I uh, met up with a bunch of people there, had a couple drinks, uh, had a really nice time there talking with people, meeting some new people for the first time. Uh, saw Ed Wesker Griff, who walked up to me and handed me these two cards, which he had brought with him uh, for my younger son, Charlie, who he knows is a big Trey Mancini fan. And um, this is an autograph card, uh, tier one, numbered out of 295. And um, just thought that was super nice of Ed. Very thoughtful to think of him and to bring these with him. Um, so that was really cool. And uh, hung out at the hotel there and um, just talked cards with a bunch of guys. We were able to catch up with some people. Um, 
went back to the show Friday morning, walked around. It was really packed, packed on Friday, Saturday as well. They actually got the air conditioning running. Uh, it, it seemed to be a lot better to me um, after that first day. So walked around, just took in some of the amazing sites. The uh, REA um, Auctions has the uh, Honus Wagner that they're currently auctioning off that's sitting at like $4.8 million right now. Um, Probe Steen had a case with 13 PSA 10 graded Jordan rookies. Um, at one point, I was standing at a table, looked up, and Rex Ryan was standing next to me. I know he uh, collects cards also, so that was kind of interesting. Um, and uh, picked up a couple things on Friday, some smaller stuff, uh, and um, for stuff for my kids. Um, then, let's see, Friday night, uh, was I was going to go to the YouTube event at the Lowe's Hotel, um, went back to my room after dinner, sat down for a minute, and the next thing I knew, it was uh, Saturday morning. Uh, totally missed that um, event, but what are you going to do? I was exhausted. Um, Saturday, back to the show, went to a trade night at the Crown Plaza, uh, which was kind of like a smaller one. There were a bunch of trade nights throughout the event, and some of them, from what I hear, were were really packed. Um, and uh, this one was kind of smaller, which was actually cool. I bought a couple of cards. I actually sold a couple of cards that I had brought. Um, on the way out, I noticed a guy that had some vintage stuff. Most of the stuff there was um, modern cards, which is what I expected. But I saw a guy with a, you know, a big case of vintage cards, and he was really friendly and, and started flipping through his stuff and just intermingled among his, his um, cards that he had brought. He had two 52 Mickey Mantles just sitting in a case um, amongst you know other pretty awesome stuff. So I talked with him for a while um, and uh, left out of there. Um, let's see, I'm going to show you, um, some of the pickup, actually, before I get to that, I want to mention, I really, the highlight of the show for me was, was talking with, with friends and from the hobby and friends from YouTube and, uh, people that I know from shows around here. And I, I wanted to kind of acknowledge people that I had met and spoken with, but it was just so many people that, um, I really don't want to leave anyone out. Um, but I did kind of note the people that I have met through YouTube that I had not previously met. So just wanted to run down those real quick. I met Rick, uh, Vintage Oddball Cards. So I'm at the show, also at the YouTube event on Thursday night. Uh, Rick, it was great meeting you. Um, it was fun uh, talking cards and walking around for a little bit. Uh, Eric, Four Leaf Cards, I met briefly at the YouTube event on Thursday night. Uh, Brandon, Brandon's Baseball Cards, saw, uh, saw you at the show and then I'll Maybe saw you also at the, uh, yeah, I did see you also at uh, the event Thursday night, so it was nice talking to you. Uh, Chris Cardi C um, had a nice conversation with you on Saturday. Um, Dead Guy Cardboard, Ben. Um, Dead Guy Cardboard is one of the first channels that I started watching when I joined YouTube, so it was really, um, have enjoyed, uh, Ben, your, your videos for a long time, so it was great meeting up with you and walking around a little bit and talking cards. Uh, Don from Don's Field of Dreams. Don um, was able to catch up with you briefly at the show. I don't even remember what day that was, maybe Friday, uh, but it was nice talking to you for a few minutes. Uh, Dustin and Blake, um, we uh, glad we were able to catch up and talk at the uh, event on Thursday night. And uh, Dustin gave me this really cool um, autographed and hand numbered custom card. Um, so it was it was cool talking to you, and we're able to catch up uh, once or twice more during the show. Uh, James, Elite Hunters, um, enjoyed talking with you at the YouTube event, and um, also Nolan, Elite Co. 3. Uh, we had not met before, so it was nice talking to you. Uh, Jeremy, IPTTM, um, also at the YouTube event, and then uh, Jeremy, I was able to see him at the show, uh, I think it was Saturday. Um, so enjoyed walking around with you for a little bit and looking at cards. Uh, Drew, lefty NDV10, um, who I kind of have, you know, communicated with a, a little bit on um, YouTube and then also on uh, Facebook, this Tobacco Road group. Uh, so Drew, it was nice meeting you and um, seeing the um, awesome postcard that you picked up and some other things. I enjoyed talking with you. Um, 
I met Max, Max Power, uh, at the YouTube event. And finally, uh, Jim, Picker Jim S., uh, who I wanted to meet and had um, communicated with through, through YouTube a little bit, uh, sent a message. And um, I'm glad we were able to meet, um, at least briefly, at the YouTube event. It was nice talking with you. Uh, so that was, I, God, I hope I didn't uh, forget anybody. Um, those are just the people that I met for the first time at this show. Um, and of, of course, dozens of other people that I had, you know, I was fortunate enough to meet at previous shows and caught up with this time also. Um, so my thoughts on the show in general were that it was absolutely packed. I took a little bit of footage of the show for those of you that weren't there to kind of give you an idea of what the crowd was like and how big the floor was. Um, so I'm just going to pause for a second, see if I can edit this in and give you a little glimpse of what the um, what the show looked like. So here we go. So as you can see, um, the kind of main hall and like little side halls, the pavilion where they had the autographs and the breakers pavilion, it's an enormous area. And this kind of gives you a, maybe a little bit of a sense of actually how big it is. Um, there were times on Friday and Saturday where certain areas you could barely walk through. You couldn't get up to tables. Uh, seemed like typically that was with the kind of the, the areas that had more modern cards um, a lot of the areas with pre-war were also very busy, but not quite as jam-packed. And, um, so now I'm going to just kind of give you, um, a run through of the stuff that I bought. Didn't buy a ton of stuff. Um, I'm going to kind of save the best stuff for last. First, I'll show you some stuff I got for my kids. Actually, um, I'm going to go through these quickly. Got all these Chase Young cards, um, some friends of the family, uh, my younger son's friends are big Chase Young fans, so I was able to get those. Um, picked up these cards for my son Jack. So Jeter Downs. Um, good, so they're numbered to 150. He's a prospect for the Red Sox. Tristan Cassis, also a big Red Sox prospect. That one's numbered to 50. And um, if I can pick it up, Jaron Duran, who's up with the Red Sox now, um, he's doing pretty well. Um, then, like I mentioned before, my younger son, Charlie, is a big Trey Mancini fan. Got this uh, Bowman Chrome Refractor Rookie Auto. So I thought that was a pretty cool card. I hadn't seen that one before. Um, got this Alex Verdugo Inception autograph this one's numbered to 125 i actually got this one at the trade night at the crown plaza a couple more train mancini cards a pink refractor um heritage and uh a couple more mancinis there um all right now for my pickups actually let's do these first um i usually pick up kind of like some bigger stuff for my sons um i've typically for the past couple of years come home with chrome tops chrome uh, boxes for them which have gotten really expensive and sometimes you know i'll try to get them some nicer um, single cards uh this year i kind of knew what my budget was i knew what i wanted to spend and i decided to go a different route this year and pick them up one big card each something that will maybe be a little bit more memorable um so these are the two cards that i found um, a 1932 Bulgaria Max Schmeling and Babe Ruth card. Um, it's graded PSA two and a half. And this is actually not from Bulgaria. It's actually a German cigarette company and, um, from 1932. And uh, this photograph was taken, I believe, at a Cleveland Indians game. 
and was included in their set. Max Schmeling was in town for a fight and Babe Ruth was there. And uh, that's where the photo was taken. Um, I think that is one of the more undervalued cards in the hobby. Um, really uh, not too difficult to obtain. This is the second one I got. A Sanella Margarine 1932 Babe Ruth card. Um, this one's graded authentic. It's not altered uh, for some reason. The guy that I bought it from submitted it himself and I guess requested to have it that way. I'm not sure. Uh, but it doesn't really matter to me. Um, another relatively inexpensive Babe Ruth card from his playing days that I think looks fantastic. Um, so I brought these home for the boys and um, thankfully one of them wanted one and one of them wanted the other one. So that made that really easy. Didn't have to flip a coin or anything like that. Um, so that's kind of the stuff that I got for them. And, uh, you know, hopefully those are cards that they will, uh, you know, find to be a little bit more memorable as the years go by. Um, for myself, my, my brother had actually um, given me a really nice uh, gift before I left. And he said that he was going to buy me a card. He PayPal'd me some money. And uh, this is what I found. And I just absolutely love this. This is a, uh, a set from 1900 WD and HO Wills cigarettes. And the set is called uh, Sports from All Nations. This is obviously uh, America and baseball. And um, the set has, I'm not sure how many cards. This one's number 33. And, you know, different countries and the sports that are associated with those countries. And um, this one has a Three Castles brand back. There's a bunch of different brands uh, from this company that are, you can get on the back. But I just think that this image and the card itself is absolutely awesome. Um, I don't recall, I had seen this somewhere before. I don't know where, I don't remember whether it was on someone else's channel or online somewhere. And I said to myself that if I ever saw this, I was going to buy it. Um, I just absolutely think it's a really cool card. These are just generic, like a generic scene, not a particular player. Um, but a really cool card. I think the back looks neat also. And so that was a gift uh, from my brother. So I'm really happy with that. Um, actually, these are two other cards that um, my brother who was not there, but I picked these up. These are gonna be gifts from my brother to my two boys. This is a Trey Mancini five-star autograph. And this is kind of a cool one, a Xander Bogart's Bowman Chrome Draft from 2013, Blue Wave Refractor, and it's a pristine 10. So that's gonna be for my older son's birthday, which is coming up. And uh, my older son and I have the same birthday. So the uh, the Will Cigarettes card was, was a gift from my brother for my birthday. And the Bogarts will be for my son. Um, now, finally, I had a bunch of cards that I kind of have have on my list, my want list, and um, didn't really go with the intention of looking for one in particular, but I saw a Bill Russell rookie. Um, well, let's just show this card. This is a SGC5 1957 Tops Bill Russell card. And... Um, I just think this is a really nice example. Um, before I talk any more about this one, some of you may remember uh, that saw me on Thursday night that I had a PSA 4 of this card that I also bought at the show. And uh, I bought that on Thursday um, and was happy with it until I saw this one on Friday, I think it was. And uh, this card, I don't. for those of you that are familiar with this set and this card, it's so difficult to find with nice registration and without a bunch of snow and print defects and the centering is usually way off. Um, so I kind of traded up uh, essentially for this one. I sold the other one, added some cash in and was able to come away with this one. Um, I think this card actually looks even undergraded. 
Um, I don't really care enough to send it back, but just a really nice, to me, example of this card. And um, was happy to add that one. Really happy with that card. And uh, that's really all I bought at the show. Um, figured that I would uh, bring out my koozie rookie, which I've shown in the past also. And have those there together. And also um, Bill Russell Auto. I think Bill turned 90 this year. Uh, one of the all-time greats for sure. Uh, so that's it. Those are my pickups from the show. Kind of my thoughts on the show in general. As I've already mentioned, I, I think it exceeded expectations. It was a great time. Um, just, you know, looking forward to the next one. Atlantic City next year. I can't wait. Um to end out my video, I have a bunch of um, clips and some photos of some cards that I found interesting as I was walking around. So for, the, for those of you that uh, weren't able to make the show, here's just some stuff that I liked. And I'm uh, not the greatest with uh, taking videos of the show, but I hope you guys enjoy this. I will see you soon. Uh, take care. Bye. I can't build them. on with the rest of the show. Excuse me, sir? Okay. 